Hey there, guys. This is Malorian, and this is Jank Tank, and with me is my co-host, Tim Man XL. <laughs> How's it going, guys? We are now at episode five. Uh, I am just starting to get things set up in this room, so lighting is still screwed up. You can see things are emptied. Everything's going to start moving around, but uh, yeah, otherwise, looking to have some fun here. Uh, for those who this is your first time watching Jank Tank, this is more the positive side of, of War Machine. You know, if you are here for like hardcore tactics, this might not be the right one, but we're going to be talking some fun jank and some good stuff. So, Tin Man, what have you been up to this last week? Oh, well, just work, and I actually haven't really done much significant this week. I played some War Machine. Good, good. You know, um... Just you know, working on rebuilding that me that meta. Uh, the 40k guys in my in my local game store built a bunch of tables. Uh, basically, these two by four boards that you put together to form a table. So they take three of those boards to put put a table together. We grabbed two. We played a, a game on it. I took some pictures and I'm gonna post in the Steam Power TV uh, Facebook group for those of you who are in there. I forgot to post them before. Mm -hmm. Now I'm thinking about it. So the tables look good. They're talking about get some of the same guys are talking about building some terrain and stuff. So if 40k gets more popular in my game store, that means War Machine gets more popular because it's easier to get a 40k player interested in War Machine than it is a Magic player. So absolutely, yep. As long as we don't get no game versus game drama, everything will be cool. Yeah. So what happened in your games? Well, my objective was simple: of playing against playing against Scorn, and he had an agonizer on the table. And when I see that, I don't care if I win or lose as long as I take that little bastard out. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I lost, but you know what? I got that little thing. I got it! <laughs> Those, got and it, what is it? It's chain gain, right? Isn't it chain gain that can take, like, multiple agonizers? It's just... <laughs> hey, oh, that's really killer. Hates him so much. <laughs> So, otherwise, uh, any other things like, you know, any painting or anything this week? <laughs> no. <laughs> no time? No time. I uh, I get exhausted. Yeah, but I haven't done any painting for a while either. With, oh, sorry. I was going to say, like, my painting has kind of gone to a halt right now as well. I need to try and get that thing going again. But, uh... Some awesome things I had to talk about this last week. Remember last week I was talking about that Masters I was trying to put together with 50 people? Mm -hmm. It sold out in eight hours. So I need 50 people to prove to Will Hungerford that you know we can make it sanctioned. And bam, it just sold out like that. So that's fantastic. Also have like a, a, a backup list of like 12 people just you know waiting to hop in if somebody drops. So fantastic there. Um, this weekend, there's a steamroller in Edmonton here that I'll hopefully be going to on the Monday. And then uh, my buddy, who's going to China, wants to have like one last big like hurrah and is doing this crazy like tournament thing in his house where you bring three 25-point lists and you play, I believe it's three games with those three lists. And then after you combine them for one big 75-point game. So it's kind of like a, a weird like Iron Gauntlet type thing, but should just be fun. I had an idea for a, um, a format that I would want to try. Mm -hmm. Iron Man match. Here's how it works. 15-point Megal Metal, basic, right? Mm -hmm. Three casters and no two, and uh, pretty much uh, no repeat character jacks between the three casters. So three separate casters, no repeat characters between the three groups. You play a regular 15-point game. At the conclusion of that game, the loser's stuff enters the field. The winner's stuff continues fighting. You go until no one has a remaining warcaster. Okay, yeah. So you're going to try that out with your group there and see how it works? I might. Thinking about it. They are setting the camera up for that one too, but I kind of got a couple of other projects in the bin. I want to wrap up first before I do. Ah, fair enough. Yeah. So, uh, do you have anything else to announce, or do you want to get into our, our jank or junk section? Let's check your list out. 
All right, so this one, um, I was supposed to actually be playing Rias. I've been teasing the guys at Advanced Maneuvers about how they owe me a Ashen versus Rias game. I played against uh, Rias. I was going to be playing with Rias, but then they made me play Grail instead, but that's a different story. But I got thinking about Rias, and one of the cool things that she has is, of course, like her feet where things get to attack, get an extra attack, hopping all over, and then as well she put stealth on herself. So the type of list I want to make was one that could really take advantage of that leaping all over, getting lots of attacks, and as well as stealth. And so here's my idea. Oh, oh, he's... He's leaving on me. It's too scary. This jank. <laughs> but uh, how this works, so to say for those watching, is so there's Rias, and then past Rias, it's really simple, 14 rakes. So the rakes are those awesome little tiny things with the whippy tail. They have, you know, natural stealth. So the entire list is going to have stealth. So 14 beasts is probably a lot for Rias to try and handle, but everything just kind of like slowly moves up to begin with. And then when it's attack time, stuff just goes crazy because Rakes are moving in, they're hopping over, making an attack on the feet, then they're hopping somewhere else, you know, getting like three attacks per model and then being able to buy. And while the opponent is trying to deal with all these Rakes going all over the place, Rias is trying to take out those key models. So charge in, kill something, sprint back. Of course, they're still trying to deal with all these 14 ranks, the rakes, and what you're trying to do is eventually get on the caster. So it's it's not one of these things that really has like a solid game plan, but it's more just about like baffling with bullshit. We're like, oh my god, there's rakes everywhere. And while they're trying to desperately deal with all these rakes, you know, Ryus just looking for that kill. If I had a choice to go up against a shredder swarm or a rake swarm, I'm probably gonna pick the shredder swarm without even thinking. Yeah. So you're saying it's good. We're looking at jank, not junk, then? Yes. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, you know, the Shredder Swarm's intimidating, but if I know it's going to happen in advance, not in a sort of, oh, I see you're playing with this, let me make a different list sort of way, but a, hey, I know this guy has 50 Shredders. He's been urging, itching to use it. The only thing I could really use to deal with that would be Nemo. Yeah. <laughs> Lightning everywhere. It's like, well, that one lost its spirit. That one lost its body. That one took, like, three points of damage because I rolled snake eyes. That one, that one's almost dead. You know? <laughs> can't do that with a bunch of rakes. Yeah, and, I mean, you can't shoot them, so that's off the table. And, I mean, they have pretty good natural defense. I, I believe they're naturally defense 15 or something. something so, like I mean... That. They're pretty hard to deal with. So I don't know. So for you viewers, uh, please comment down below if you think it's jank or junk. But uh, yeah, there's the the janky list for the day. And if there's some brave Legion player out there, proxy it. You know, proxy uh, 14 rakes and riots and let us know how that works out. I guess someone who will talk to you after you do it, of course. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. All right, so we had some questions from the people that posted on my, my video there from before. And the first one here is from Lord17C, and it says, What do y'all think will be in the 10th anniversary box for Hordes? So Tin Man, any thoughts on that one there? The 10th anniversary box for War Machine was, of course, a... Uh... Butcher Unleashed. Butcher was one of the two Warcasters featured on the cover of the original War Machine Prime, as well as Prime Remax. So I have in my possession the original Hordes. Ooh. So let's have a look here. See, I talk a big game and now I'm not seeing it. Oh, here it is. <laughs> then you can't find it. All right, here we go. And it is, of course, a dire troll and a um, a Titan gladiator duking it out. So it doesn't it isn't a battle between two warlocks here. Hmm. So let's have a look. See if we can spot one. Yeah, it's just like um, a wave of, of troll bloods and. Scorn, it's a Scorn Praetorians, it looks like, and it looks like the uh, Creole Warriors. So, 
So I'm not too up with the fluff back then, but was there like a poster boy for hordes back in the day when they first came out? Uh, not not so much. No, there hmm. was uh, they showcased the different the battle box casters. So I'm thinking one of the battle box casters could be it. I've I've uh, let's see here. Around here somewhere, I think I have Horde's Primal. All right, let's take a closer look at that. So we've got Madrak fighting on one end here very clearly. I'm trying to see who the other guy is. This is, of course, the Mark II Horde's book here. Yeah. He was there. What were some of the original casters back in Mark I when Horde's first came out? Oh, well, lucky for me, I happened to pull the book out for that. But what did I say? <laughs> and then you probably put it away. <laughs> uh, and I think I might have put it up. Did I? Did I? No, I didn't. I set it down and forgot where I put it because I'm pushing 40. Uh, so we Makeda 3. Is she one of the originals, Makeda? Yeah, Makeda's one of the originals. Uh, in fact, all the originals are in here except for... So let's see here. So maybe this will be Trolls because something where this could match up is that in the recent fluff... Uh, Chromac just went and stole the the axe from Madrak, right? Mm. So maybe the one in the box will be Madrak 3? Who Think knows? that could be possible? Who knows? Oh, I put it back on my shelf. Well. And for some reason, Madrak 3 will have two Arguses or something? I don't, no, no, <laughs> that's still the other way. So he's going to be like two um, Now that, Matt, that curse... Axe with Madrak, he, that was a that was an axe he was trying to get away, get rid of for a long time. So, mm -hmm. but it's there's a curse where it just uh, he can't get rid of it. He'll throw it away, and then he'll, like he'll wake up the next morning and it's like sitting right there next to him. But Chromac so took it. Chromac took it. That curse might have transferred to him. I mean, but that's one. I don't think Chromac's one of those. Well, I got more problems than just this. So he probably responded to the curse and said, "Wait, Gorshade responded to his like, I'm cursed." I don't know if you saw it. You probably did. The picture of uh, Chromac uh, 2, there he's like all crazy and his hair is going all nuts. And Wait, where's Chromac 2's picture posted? Uh, back when they did the video for the Gargantuans, uh, they had that whole video went through, and at the very end, it was like flash, flash, flash of all these pictures, and one of them is of Chromac 2. It's just oh. the art, not the model or anything, but he looks pretty crazy insane. So who knows? Maybe he's the one. Was Chromac... An original caster? Oh, he wasn't. He was introduced in Horde's Evolution, which was the second Horde's expansion. Okay. It was him and Morvana the Autumn Blade that were introduced in that one. And that was like the book that got me playing Circle, because I kind of turned my nose up at Horde's when it first came out. Mm. But the Horde's Evolution and uh, Morvana the Autumn Blade, I thought it was a really cool model. And I was on the fence about going either Legion or Circle. Okay. And I went with Circle for two reasons. One, out and Ashley could hire him. Two, or they could hire out Nashley. Two, uh, I thought the you know, the werewolves are cool and all that. And I thought Morvana was cool. Then I bought her. Mark one Morvana I felt was, was fun to play with. Mark two Morvana I still haven't figured out yet. All right. So my bet's going to be Madrak three. And I don't know how he's going to be now that he has no crazy axe. Maybe it's going to be, I mean, Butcher He's going to be happy troll. He's going to be happy troll without that curse on him anymore. I guess, yeah. Man, I, I was like, going to say, you know, like, whereas Butcher 3 was like, blah, I'm crazy. I got these Arguses. Like, Madrak 3, he's just going to be, like, sitting on a nice little, like, tuft of grass and, like, having some tea or something. Just, like, nice and peaceful. He's he going to be drinking beer with Borka going, you know what feels good right now? Wait. That could work Curse as well. gone. That's what. That will be his thing. Instead of going around with two Arguses, he'll have like two big kegs of beer that he yep. brings around the board. <laughs> yeah, I'll two uh, two pygmy trolls carrying kegs for him because you know. Yeah. Well, I figure you know he just be, you know he just be all like Hannibal in the A team and got the cigar, got the grin, you know, got himself a different weapon with no curse on it. Go, you know, yeah. what I like about this axe, there's no curse on it. Who yeah. doesn't come back to you when you throw it? Well, I got a gun. I can shoot people. 
Yeah, it works. But you have them all like Hannibal from the 18, just just chewing a cigar, this big grin on his face. Like he just finished saying, I love it when a plan comes together. Yeah. And he's got weapons that are magical, but not cursed. So if you're going to put your money down, who do you think will be in the box? Well, I don't know. I'm a, a wait and see kind of guy. Uh, we could we could go over some candidates here. Of course, original troll casters. You had Madrick Ironhide there. You have had Harlock Doom Shaper, and I believe there was also Grizzel Blood Song, mm-hmm. the, uh, the fell caller, and then all right, Beast, Beast, Beast. Circle Orbros, of course, you had Kaya the Wildborn, Baldur the Stone Cleaver. Kaya 3 can be interesting as well. You know, yeah, you know, my, 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 well, I think for Kaya 3 would be awesome is if she took the Warp Wolf potion. Oh, so she turns warp. into a wolf. She takes the Warp Wolf potion and becomes a Warp Wolf Warcaster. That'd be pretty cool. That would be awesome. <laughs> Because I'm thinking she's she's already crazy. What she's gonna do it? Yeah, I'd be all over that. Sure. And we'd have like a female werewolf model so in line with, because uh, uh, you know the only other range I've seen female werewolf models is the uh, confrontation line. Hmm? And I think that'd be cool to see something uh, something similar for Privateer Press. And so you know, but anyway, scorn. And these are your other contenders because of the cover here. Sure. Is, of course, we've got uh, Master Tormentor Morgul, or as we called him back in the day, Baldo. Baldo? Okay. Uh, anyone familiar with the uh, Soul Calibur uh, video games? Baldo is one of the characters. Hmm. Then, literally, one. Morgul looks like looks like Baldo. Fair, fair. So Morgul 3 could be cool as well. I mean, we got um, Arch Domino Makeda. She's already had her third version, of course. Yep. So they probably won't have something, unless it's an alternate sculpt or or something like that. And then, of course, there's Lord Tyrant uh, Hexorus here. Yeah, but Hexorus has got his number two model, so it's too early for that. And see here, but those were the, of course, uh, contenders. They did not have um, minion warlocks yet. Oh, okay, they're just uh, the allies, basically. We didn't see minion warlocks until Mark II. Oh, okay. Yeah, so the pigs and the gators they came. Uh, they were introduced with hordes Mark II. All right. So anyhow, I'm gonna just put this back up. The Lord Seventeen C. That's that's what we're thinking. Uh, Talon R saying, have you guys ever played or played against the Talion Charter? I've never seen it played, uh, but man, it seems like the jankiest army out there with the sea dogs and all the solos that buff them up, not to mention the, uh, the cannon. I know you play Mercs Malorian. Would you ever consider branching off to try these guys? I um, play them. You play them. So we're the main mercenaries. So he needs to go to Steam Power TV and watch some of my battle reports because I've got I play with Shay, Fiona, and Broadside Bart. Hmm. And yeah, they're good. And the thing is, they're also in terms of the jank. They were janky back in the day, but they've been around for so long and they haven't changed that much that they still play the same way. There's nothing, no big change-up has came along to make them play different yet. Mm. So Mark One, they came out, they're really powerful. In fact, um, speaking of them, I'm going to grab something here. Pretty cool. Sure. If you can get your hands on this, this is the, uh, the this was the first Forces of book from War Machine. This was introduced in the Mark One era back in 2007. Pirates of the Broken Coast. They did this because they're a privateer press and people would show up at their booth at Gen Con, Comic Con, and they say, well, do you have any pirate minis? And then they just have to make a frowny face and say, 
No, I'm sorry. We don't have any pirate minis. He said, but you got, you're, you're the pirate company. You're privateer press. Why don't you have pri pirate minis? So this fixed that. People yeah. said it was a tie-in where they're just trying to cash in on the popularity of Pirates of the Caribbean because Pirates 3 came out that same year. But no, no, no. That was a coincidence. Anyways, this book, if you can get your hands on it, some of the best fluff I've ever read from War Machine. In this in, contained in this book, and you get a sense of things going on going on away from the main narrative, which is always cool. Yeah, which we didn't really great. get that much of until they started writing books. But anyhow, way more broken back then. They got nerfed. They got nerfed so bad, people were talking about selling their army before they actually played with the new rules on these and. Um, oh. during the field test, they were kind of, they, they nerfed them too much and then they kind of ratcheted it back more when they actually got released. But, um, I like them, but like I said, they've been out for so long. They remain mostly unchanged. Mm. The only new things we've gotten for them is, uh, Gaston works for the Italian charter. And that new trio. And that new trio. Right. But nothing along the lines of. A new Warcaster, or one of the existing Warcasters calling Epic to change it up, or just more general units being introduced into the Italian Charter. Mm. The Italian Charter has more character souls than you can shake a stick at, but everybody knows what they could do. I think it needs different unit types to unit types to kind of kick it up a notch to kind of shake it up for that particular contract. I would like to see medium-based, multi-wound models during one of the leagues, one of the early Mark II leagues that they did, a league I ran at a local game store, the Black Ogren boarding party variant for that league would work with worked for the Italian Charter. Makes sense. Yeah, I'd like to see something like that. Like, is the on on board ship? It isn't just humans. There's there's you know, there's Ogrens, Trollkin, pretty much everyone they can thunk over the head and make work for them. And I'd like to see that emphasized more. I mean, there, there's rumors of a goblin unit coming out for this faction, but if okay. rumors, I'd like to see stuff like that. I'd like to see maybe things you don't expect to see getting thunked over the head and then suddenly um, working, working as pirates. Pirate bog trogs make a lot of sense pirate scorn because they're they have they've encountered pirates have encountered scorn before in the fluff hit a few of them over the head now they're now they're on the on board ship maybe they they turn in the loyal crew members that would be cool yeah. stuff like that unit a pirate unit made up of people they become like a kind of a crack unit but if they didn't become pirates they'd have been enemies because they're from different kingdoms, you know that that would be cool. Um, just something that something to kick it up a notch and change things. Maybe some cab uh, or something, right? Cab doesn't make sense for pirates because you get them on board the pirate ship, and unless of course amphibious seahorses, you know they could think of, <laughs> it's like they could think of something funny. Um, totally. For a, what I, idea I had was for a pirate battle engine. It literally be an amphibious assault vehicle. Mm -hmm. So it'd be like a crab walker with a basically that's basically a boat with like crab legs. Oh, okay, yeah. And then you have like just a massive gun, and then and then got dudes with guns inside. They think that would be pretty cool. Uh, I don't know if they'd do anything like that, but if they're listening, they go, "Hmm." They could totally rip me off on that because they know I'll, instead of getting mad, I'll just buy it when it comes out and put it together. And use <laughs> it. Um, but just something to change things up. Hmm. Yeah, for me, I use lots of press gangers in my list, be it mercenaries or signar. And, you know, I've used a couple of solos, usually Hawk, just because when they get scared, it really sucks. But, uh, of course, when it's under Shay and they're just a point each, that's awesome. The problem that I found is I actually just recently got Shay from a contest with uh, Menoth John. And so I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do so much Shay right now. But then when I started making the list, it just really wasn't what I was after. Uh, it seemed like I could make awesome 35-point lists, and I, I love the jank there. But otherwise, when I was looking to 50 points, I was needing just to run a bunch of regular pirates. Um, 
I'd always heard before about how fast Shea was, but Shea didn't seem that fast. I mean, they get plus well. They exaggerate. Shea, the what makes Shea fast is that on his feet turn, you could deal with some crazy threat range because everything's moving three inches from his feet, and then he could cast Kudama, which of course extra two inches on the charge and you charge without spinning focus. So all of his jacks are charging. So he's really good in mangled metal, but he's also at 50 points. That's everything suddenly rushing across the field. Combine that with the sea dogs who can use their no quarter, pop their mini feet, no quarter where they're, they gain like plus two inches on um, t- plus two inches in terror. Mm-hmm. That uh, means literally Mr. Walls and his sea dogs are already up in your, your opponent's face. And then you've got, you know, everything else just so you're moving that much quicker. It's like an extra five inches on the feet turn for everything. That's that's something that uh, – that's a force to be reckoned with. But then at the same time, everybody sees it coming. So either they're very cautiously advancing up the board mm. or they're making sure that their expendable stuff is on that front line to absorb the hit. Yeah. Um, so we have a, a comment here from Chance Encounter who's watching, and he said that he played a game with Cricks against Legion over the weekend and got taken out by a blighted Mist Sorceress in Hellion with mm-hmm. his magical template attack and a heavy beast with armor pierce, so the Angelius. Mm-hmm. How do you determine the pow of the magical template attack of the Sorceress in Hellion? Uh, I think he's just talking about the spray, right? Let me look them up real quick because I got... I'm pretty sure it says right there in the back of the card what the POW is of the spell. Yeah, it should all be there. So let me see here. Is it just called the Sorceress and Hellion? Because I am not. I don't have like a photographic memory. Yeah, it's called the Sorceress and Hellion, and I can also find just the card here because I'm a Legion player. So it's, it's, a, it's through. a unit, right? Uh, it is a solo, and I have it right here. So if you look at the back of it, it's Frostbite Attack. It says right here that it's uh, spray eight and it's pow twelve. So that's how you determine. Is it says it right there. Um, also, what can I do as a Crix player to take it out before it wrecks my infantry? Well, it shouldn't be doing. I mean, okay, it's it's magic ability seven. Uh, remember, it still has to roll a hit with all these things, and it's speed eight, so it can fly in. It can do the spray. I think the biggest thing is that this thing is four points. And if it's going to come in here and do its spray, it's it's going to die after. So sure, it might spray off some guys, but that's the one thing you don't have as Cricks is that you don't have uh, typically lots of range. And if you have a Kraken, do you really want to waste your Kraken shot on this? Maybe. Not to mention you got your you know you got your um, pistol wraiths for solo assassination. You've got your um, it is armor sixteen with ten boxes though, so it's not the easiest thing to kill. But when you, you just kind of kill a couple of mooks to get those soul tokens, granted you're up against Legion, so it practically everything's soulless, but not everything's soulless. And I think the biggest thing is just take your Mechanothralls, right? Mechanothralls, go towards it, go ahead, spray some down. Oh, look, they're all back. Now it charges and this thing's dead, right? Oh, yeah. Mechanothralls, Brute Thrall. Then, of course, you know, let's see here. You've got, the Levi- you got your like Leviathan. It's got its ghost shot. Yeah, but I recall that being long range. The only other thing I could think he might be talking about is it has Blight Storm. So basically you play it place down a five inch AoE anywhere, completely in his command range. And it's one of those things where if anybody makes an attack against an enemy in that zone and it doesn't exceed armor, you automatically do one point. Mm-hmm. And so if that's what you're talking about, chance encounter, then the pow doesn't really matter. It's okay, I, I something's in this range here. I shoot an archer at it. I fail to do damage. Oh, okay. Then one point of damage. And that's all how you work it out. But there you go. Some some Legion tech. Um, just before we go on to the next question, to go going back to the Italian char- uh, chapter, that cannon. I bet you've been loving that thing. It was just three different modes and slams and stuff. Gunnery, gunnery, fire, and I particularly like the uh, the long range cannonball there. That what slams, is, right? It's something. It's something stupid. I remember that. It's like there's a reason you can only use it with Shea. And then I believe also that you can use the coins from the little dwarf guy on it as well, right? 
Uh, that only affects Sea Dog Crew. Uh, I I'll, believe I'll, I'll look that up real quick, though. Yeah. I know there's like a limit to who can put his coins on. So let's see here. Effect. Uh, let's see here. Lord Rock Bottom, where you at? Okay, Lord Rock Bottom. So Lord Rock Bottom's coins. There's payment, so money shot and payday. And then to see here, during this model's activation, you can mark one more for each coin. Let's so see here. It's friendly sea dog units. Mm -hmm. And let's see here. The Commodore it's a sea dog unit. Is a sea dog, yeah. Yeah. So you can soup that thing up and boom. Mega shot. And more then, of course, shot. you can also get. Um, you also get the the other solo that's good is um where's he at where's he at he's the guy walk, running around barefoot Dougal McNeil you get Dougal McNeil on that and he's got artillerist mm -hmm. and and double powder rashids here yep absolutely so, yeah it's uh now of course McNeil isn't in the um in, in Chase Theme Force but. Yes. Hey, but let's see here. Payday. So, so walk it off, payday, and then money shot plus two range and damage for one turn. So yeah, that's uh. Just in case range twenty wasn't enough, maybe twenty two. <laughs> well, I think it's range. Let's see here. Let me let me check the stats on. Each of the different shots has a different range. I believe there's one that's a spray. One that's 20, then one that's something in between, of course. No, Commodore Cannon is not coming up on my list here. Hmm. Dilio. Commodore Cannon. Well, we're about oh, a little bit past halfway. Do you want to move on to the next one? or? Certainly. I was just like, I just got to see. Just got to know. We must know. Okay, then. What? Oh, well, you read that. Uh, I'm going to read up the next question. It's right. from Unka Stunka, and he says, Tearless. In my mind, they have gone totally overboard. Some of them are really silly and is killing the diversity. I have maneuvered some of the more stupid myself, and it really feels like it's dumbing down the list selection part of the game. The tiers that make weaker casters interesting are fun, but the ones that build themselves and get so many bonuses that it makes you wonder what PP we're thinking of, especially when the caster is solid from the beginning. I know that the tiers are not made to balance out the game, but so that they are made, but so what are they made to wreck the game? So what are your, what are your thoughts with the tiers? Are, are you still looking up the Commodore cannon? Yeah, to look at the Commodore again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, rage, yeah, rage twenty becoming rage twenty two is like literally shooting at someone's deployment. That's why the thing's so slow because it was like a normal light cat, a light, yeah, artillery. You'd be shooting at someone's deployment zone or like turn two. But uh, yeah, um, the 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 tier lists have always been hitting this. They've always been tier lists that look good on paper, but then you don't want to play. And then there's those tier lists that uh, will take a, ca a mediocre caster and make them really good. I'm not going to say which one because I don't want to stir up controversy. And then there are those tier tier lists that are just like, really? Really? Like uh, Epic Denny's tier list. I played against that in the tournament and was not happy to see somebody putting their upkeep spells on my army uh, turn one. But that's okay because he wasn't happy to see that I had purification. Mm -hmm. circle cast on a circle warlock he's like so it's like he starts off puts everything down morvana cast purification and um he was just like why did they give circle purification <laughs> and you're i said purification when you're putting your upkeeps out before the game <laughs> and i was like i just spent nearly half my focus to, to get rid of these shenanigans here Okay, <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah I, I, I see where people are coming from. That's on Privateer Press to not play test the tier list thoroughly enough. Um, generally, I think they uh, they do get do their market research and see what's being played and what's not being played, and I think that's a factor. But 
you don't want to overcompensate, you know, over overstate it in one direction. But yeah, it is kind of on privateer to put those out there. Mm. And it's like the the whole fiasco with no quarter a few a few months back where Kalissa got that tier list where they had to rot it because yeah. it was like um gain of focus and suddenly we saw the Hail Hydra meme. Yeah. Uh, my personal favorite was just the Hydra with Super Saiyan hair. <laughs> and I, I know there's kind of like a disparity because when they first put out the books in, in Mark II, I hear about how, you know, a lot of those tier lists are garbage, like the original Signar ones and stuff, because usually it's just like, oh, take two of this unit and you get some minor upgrade. Mm -hmm. But since then, they've made a lot of ones that are more interesting. And it's a fine line. It's hard to do something that's interesting but then not broken. And I think as well, when you have these really strong casters, it's hard to do any benefits and not make it just better, right? Right. I mean, Denny too likes anything. So if you give her a tier, it, it doesn't really matter what she has in there. Anything that's a bonus is just awesome for Denny, right? Whereas if one of the things that holds back, let's say the Haley's, is that you can't take the Squire in the tier. Okay, that kind of makes those things even. But then that's a model that she depends on, whereas some other ones like Denny 2 don't depend on those models, so it's not caught the same way. Now, one thing I like were the tiers that where you get to do things you wouldn't normally do. Um, Captain Shays has an alternate tier where he could take uh, he can work with the dwarves, mm. and there's a really cool story of them justifying justifying that. I like that. Or uh, uh, Zerkova's the theme force where she's using. Um, She's using vanguards. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, Kador conquered Lael, so you'd think they would be using vanguards. Well, vanguard doesn't fit to the style of most Kador casters because of Kador, bigger is better, bigger is smashier. And you have Zorkova being clever like she is going, hey, I can use these. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, there's there a tier one. Hmm? The Arcadius one is one of my favorite ones lately where they took a caster that's hardly getting played, make a very interesting list that's pulling in, like, also, like, you have these sh new shield guard Goraxes. You know, sure, why not, right? Mix things up, make it crazy, and all of a sudden it's 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 fun, and it's not like it's dominating tournaments or anything. Right, and then there's also one where it's a uh, Kruger the Stormwrath working with Eris, you know, yeah. the mate counter of Ios. So literally, it's like a part of the theme force is that he gets to hire Eris as a minion. I think that's cool. Stuff like that's cool. Or something that, because there are a lot of people out there that own more than one faction. So throwing things out there throwing is a, is a kind of a thank you to the people that are like, their, like the privateer product so much that they're buying more than one faction. Mm. That kind of stuff is cool. You know, like going, okay, well, we got this theme force. This is like, uh, I think there's a point in the fluff there, because I'm not fully caught up on my fluff where, where Denegra and, and Haley were working together. Little yeah. theme forces to reflect that. Like, she's off off this sacred mission with her trusted with her trusted people, and oh, by the way, part of that trust is that maybe she's working with some something Crixian, or Crixian stuff is maybe working with a few long, with a long gun unit or something. That's sure. that's kind of interesting, you know. Uh, so I think overall, like tiers are good for the game because they mix things up and they give you another interesting way to play. And if you look at all the tiers out there, there's there's like over a hundred, right? There's lots, so it, it's guaranteed that over that whatever number of tiers they have, there'll be a couple where it's like, ooh, those are maybe a little bit too good. And I mean, you can't take those couple. And then say that all the tier, like the whole tier system isn't good, right? I'd say overall, I would not like to see the tiers go away. I think tiers are good for the game. Yeah, that just gets us back to casual play versus competitive play. Uh, and just how, uh, I, I, there's a friend of mine I played War Machine with, you know, before, for a few years, for a few years now. And he was talking about War Machine like is this game that's just supposed to be serious. And he described, and he literally was looking into other games they have on the side for whenever he needs a break for War Machine to quote just have fun with. Mm. And I'm thinking something's wrong here if people are reviewing War Machine as a game to that's 
so serious that you can't have fun. That you can't have fun with it. I saw a, an argument on Twitter uh, between a couple of people where it was literally one going, "This is a it's a game. You're supposed to be having fun," and then the others are the others were talking about their, you know, winning tournament. Just like, what do I got to do to win? Versus, well, you should. Make maybe have fun and make some friends. Yeah, that was, you know, that, that's the conversation. It was a conversation a buddy of mine had with someone here locally. Dude walked up to him and said, All right, well, you know, I know that you're a guy that wins a lot of games and you win a lot of tournaments. What do you think it takes to be you get to win and, and to you know be a winner in these tournaments? And he said, Well, right now we don't have enough people around to be, be, to be thinking about that. Uh, when he said, quote, when you can play 10 different games against 10 different people every week, when you can show up at the game store and there's always somebody there with a war machine army, you can think about playing like that and being that competitive. But when it is this small, you just want to play for fun and get new people into the game. Yeah. You know, that's, that's how it's got to be. And I think stuff like this highlights it because people are only thinking about winning the big tournaments and what do I got to do to win? And that's why that's when you start to see the power gamers out there. So yeah. that the, the people going to these high powered lists like body and soul, uh, when they're playing, um, Bradigus. Yeah. <laughs> you know, these are power gamers. These are guys that don't, I've been a Signar player for 10 years now mm -hmm. and I got mercenaries to have, you know, the, the build up an army that would supplement my main faction where I could say, okay, most of the mercenary stuff I have works for Signar. So if I want to get all crazy and play an even bigger game, I got the option of all these mercenaries I could throw on the table too. I've got circle because I wanted a horde army. And then same thing I got, I've got uh, the uh, blind water congregation as my minions. Mm -hmm. And many of the blind water congregation work for circle. And even though that, Battle Engine works for Circle, too. And I've been playing Circle since 2007. And so the power gamers in this game, these are guys that will literally switch between different factions to the point that you never know what they're going to be playing. And what they're doing is they're finding the winning lists posted online, and they're buying those models, and only those models, and they're taking those to tournaments. And that's kind of uh, everything. All right, man. Oh, it's my my daughter. I keep on hearing whining. She because you pulled my our little dog into the crawl space there. So <laughs> sorry if I keep on looking distracted. It's just yeah. Even though she knows the dog's not supposed to be in there, a little tiny wiener dog. So <laughs> right. I, I had to get up uh, earlier just because I heard like choking. Oh, so I had to make sure everything was all right. I was going to sit here doing this while someone could be choking in the in the next room, but hmm. uh, yeah, the that's what I think it is. I think these are power gamers out there, and you really run into them in the tournament scenes. I think uh, there's means to be more of a push for those of us who just want to have fun, for those of us who just work somewhere, and after a long day at work, you just want to sit down and enjoy a game and have some fun. I think there needs to be more of a push for us because all the push has been for the big tournament scene who's winning what are they winning with and opposed to who's laughing and joking and having the best time yeah it, it does make it tough uh one of the things that kind of happened around here is that we did have this group that kept on the grots that came in and kept on crushing everybody and there was a lot of people that actually just stopped playing because they didn't like losing all the time these guys but it was interesting how it kind of shifted, and then all of a sudden, it was like we got pushed enough that people said, you know what? No, we're going to start beating these guys. And so there was a subset that kind of pulled away to try and, you know, up their game to beat these guys. But at the same time, you had the other people that were like, you know what? No, we just want to be playing for fun. So they kind of like shifted away. And instead of playing in the stores, they just started playing in their own groups and their own garages and stuff. So it really fragments the group when you start yeah. having this whole debate but uh, and then that's why it's on the tournament organizers to change things up and not just give it, not just do the same thing over and over again. 
Mm. So if you if you're if you've got a lazy press ganger and all he knows how to do is run steamrollers, then that that's a part of the problem. I mean, me as a press ganger, I'm always changing it up. I'm always changing up formats. I'm always throwing those curveballs to help keep things fun. Yeah. Or finding ways for the guy that isn't who who finding finding ways for the guy who isn't winning it every game to have fun. Like I I had an a, one thing I was doing with the last few steamrollers I've ran back when I was running them. Uh, when I build my met up, I may run them again. Is I had an achievement list to where. Okay. Even if you're the guy that lost every game, you can still get off these achievements. So that's kind of like when they have like the colossal opening event, right? Where there's like a sheet of things you're trying to achieve, like kill a caster with a power attack and stuff like that. Right. But I've been doing that stuff for a long time. And they first did that in, um, they first did like achievements in the original summer rampage. It was back in 2007. It was a big mm-hmm. hordes versus, there was the, Hordes versus War Machine event okay. that they had did. It was basically ran like a league, and it had achievements where things like a boasting system where you could say, I'm going to beat you in 15 minutes. Okay. And that was the boast. And if you pulled off your boast, you got extra points for that. That <laughs> stuff was cool. And if you're that guy that can't win every game and you have little stuff like that, you could try to pull off. That is fun too. And if you got an achievement from me, I gave you tickets, depending on what the achievement was worth. And I'd have an achievement that was worth 10 points, and then some that were worth five, some that were worth one. And you got tickets. And at the end of the game, I would raffle off a random prize. Okay. And so literally, I ran a tournament once where literally the guy that came in dead last, he got himself a prize because he earned achievement points. Uh, we had a, a comment here. Stephen Walker is watching here saying that he despises netlisters, and he says, circle for life. But we are running close to the end here. We have two more questions, and one's a doozy. So I think just moving on to the next one. Uh, this one should be pretty easy. Uh, it's from Yo 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 My Name saying, I play Wood Elves and Warhammer, and it's a ranged combat but uh, is that really possible, that type of style in War Machine Hordes, where you pretty much primarily just have lots of little guys shooting, uh, kind of like the run around and like avoidance type thing? Uh, and are most of these games still fun? You can do that with Signar. Signar was the original shooty army. Uh, yeah. So you could do that with Signar. You just get yourself some gun mages, get the dude, get yourself some rangers. I was thinking like, you know, Everblight. And if you had like the Raptors and Striders, that's kind of yeah. like you know, that run around shoot thing. Also, Retribution of Skyra. And that's an elf faction too. So if you like the elf aesthetic, then of course, Retribution of Skyra is going to be good for you there. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a lot of run and gun stuff. They got the Mage Hunter Assassins, which I hate seeing across the board. That's yeah. an endorsement, by the way. Uh, they've got, you know, the, 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 the how, you know, they had a lot of, a lot of shooty stuff, even big beefy things that shoot. And that's a faction that can, it, that does run and gun really well. Yeah. Uh, and, and is it fun? I mean, one of the biggest things, the difference between Warhammer and War Machine is that in Warhammer, you can do a gun line avoidance list. and It's awesome. But in War Machine, you got to keep in mind there's a scenario. And if you want to run away, if you want to set up at the backboard and shoot, you can do that, but you're going to lose by a scenario. So you're going to have to some way find a way to make that work where, yay, I'm running around and I'm shooting you up, but i got to be a little bit aggressive as well. Otherwise, I'm just going to lose. Yeah. Uh, our last one here is a short one, but it's a doozy. Uh, it's from LuckGod84. And it says, what do you think of the next ADR casters? So, of course, they released this, what was it, last week or something, where yeah. what are going to be the second set of ADR casters. And uh, it's, I think one of the things I want to say about right away is I thought the way that the ADR was going to work was that they were going to take the four least played casters and say, you're in the, the ADR. And so I expected it to be pretty much the same but it's really different. So clearly they are doing a rotation. And from talking to some press gangers, I guess they have this whole formula behind it. And they, they it also has to deal with pairings and stuff like this. So it's actually going to be changing a lot more than I thought. Well, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually screen share this real quick. If you can like lock on my screen for me here. 
And see, I just went into screen share mode. And of course, the Tentacle Clan tie has been closed out. <laughs> and can you see it? Yes. Okay, so we're looking at, of course, Signar here. We got Commander Dalen Sturgis, who is still hasn't been put together, even though I got him as a Kickstarter reward there. General Adept, uh, uh, General Adept Nemo is actually one of my favorite uh, War Machine casters. We've got Lieutenant Alistair Kane, the first War Machine model I ever painted is there. And then we've got uh, Captain Kara Sloan, who is half painted and sitting on my desk here with a big pile of dust on her because I've been lazy about getting her finished. Um, yeah, Dalen Sturgis, relatively new. Haven't played with him yet. I've seen him played. Uh, I played a lot of games with Epic Nemo. Played a lot of games with uh, Lieutenant Alistair Kane. You'll see more than one battle report on my channel where I use both Lieutenant Kane and, of course, um, uh, uh, Kane uh, Nemo 2 there. The Lieutenant, game Kane, Lieutenant Kane games that you see from me are mostly from the Mark I era. Uh, as well as my official Mark I goodbye game that I did back in like 2000, like 2009, 2010. It was 1,000 points, and back then it was like because um, Mark I War Machine had a different, different, uh, a, di a different uh, point system than it does now. So 1,000 points was two casters back then, and it was like Lieutenant Kane, and I had Epic Striker in that game. That was a lot of fun, and. I played against Seattle James, fans of my show, uh, remember him. Kara Sloan, I played against but not with, and she's pretty awesome. To me, for Signar, it's all about Sturgis and Kane 1. That would be my pairing for sure. Yeah, my pairing would definitely be maybe uh, Epic Nemo, of course, uh, without a doubt, and then either Kane or, or Sloan. All right. Uh, then we're going to get to Protectorate here. Um, so my friend Tom's not too thrilled about this particular lineup here, but we got the High Allegiant Amon Ad Raza. We've got Fiora, Priestess of the Flame. We've got High Executioner, Servath Resnick. And we also have Vice Scrutator Vindictus. Now, um, the main protector player playing friend of mine, Tom, isn't too isn't too thrilled with this lineup because three of the four casters in this list I can easily beat, and he don't like that. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> yeah, if I could beat him, then he he doesn't play that caster that often. But uh, yeah, Ed Ross. Well, I'm not too hot about those four either. I I don't know what I'd play in there. I would personally probably be playing Vindictus with a Dude Swarm because that's how he rolls. Um, personally, I've seen I've seen um, Resnick played well. I've also seen a Raza played well, but I think uh, just my experience playing against Raza, I think he's uh, most threatening in like bankled metal scenarios versus full games mm -hmm. because he is really good at running jacks. And he doesn't really need a choir backing him up. And then Kador, they're looking pretty good. Karchev the Terrible. We got uh, Epic Vlad. We got Vlad three. Ep the original Epic Butcher. And the Old Witch. All great casters, honestly. I mean, Butcher 2 is, I don't know what you're meta, but the whole Butch, Butcher 2 tier is killing it over here. And the whole idea where if you're on ADR and can swap out, like, do you want a Conquest or do you want to have more Doom Reavers? Like, that's a scary thing to have on ADR. Mm -hmm. And then we've got Cricks. That's funny that both versions of Sturgis are rolling in this. So we got Sturgis the Corrupt, Lich Lord Venethrax. We got Lich Lord Terminus. And the Iron Lich. And Denny 3 as well will be here too. Denny 3 is in that? It will because it'll, this will come out and then the, the Denny 3 will come out, which automatically puts Denny 3 on this list. Oh, because new, new casters go on. Yeah. So people are like, well, maybe it's like going to be Denny 3 and Terminus. I don't know. Haven't played against Sturgis the Corrupt. I've played plenty of games against Terminus. He's, he's pretty tough. 
plenty of games against Iron Lich back in the day. And, of course, there's uh, Venethrax that I played against once, and when I played against him, he was proxy. Mm-hmm. And continue on, we got the Retribution. Gareth, Blade of the Retribution, who's pretty awesome. I refer to him as Melee Kane. Then we've got Kalissa, Night that Whisperer. We just talking about with her awesome tier. Yep. Then we got uh, Vi- uh, Epic Viros there. And the Lord Arcanist Osan, who's a pretty good caster that I've, I've, I've played against a few times from uh, one of our local Retribution guys. Yeah, to me, this is Kalissa and Virus uh, 2 all day. Then we've got <laughs> the Convergence of Cirrus. Now, in this list, these here, the only war warcaster I faced on this list was Iron Mother. Oh, okay, yeah. Who is uh, pretty tough to deal with. Well, Convergence doesn't have very many casters, and last time was only Father off the list. So now Father's back on, and Synthirion's off, and... Uh, the biggest one I'm hearing, it's just mother and father. That's probably what you're going to see here. Yeah, it's it's it, it's um, it, it's in trouble with your parents, I guess. Right? Yeah. We are very disappointed to you. And then mercenaries. Yes, mercenaries. Uh, no pirate love here. No, no. None of the pirate cat. None of the pirates are here. We've got Magnus the Traitor, the original. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the original two mercenary warcasters. Of course, Magnus the Traitor. And Gordon Grunbeck, both from War Machine Escalations there. We also have uh, Ashlyn, which was the first Warcaster to be to be debut, to make their debut in No Quarter magazine. She made her debut in No Quarter number two prior to her making her formal debut in War Machine Superiority. Mm-hmm. And then we got Drake McBain, <laughs> the first mercenary to be an actual mercenary, to actually, to actually be in it for the money. And what's my current pairing for mercenaries? It's Magnus and Ashlyn. So to me, this is awesome. And if I was one of the guys that had the money to have like a Gordon triple Earthbreaker, like that's the, the idea of like, do I want to have two Earthbreakers or three? You know, like that's that's scary for this ADR stuff. Well, my pairing would be Ashlyn and Drake just because I, hmm. I, those are the two that I have fully painted. And in my Magnus, I haven't painted yet. Plus they're the coolest. Yeah. Definitely. And their abilities kind of complement each other, so they got that going on. But anyhow, now we get to the Horde side of the fence here, so we're going to start off with the Troll Bloods. We got Calandra, the true Saiyan Oracle of the Glimmerwood. We've got Borka, Vengeance of the Rhyme Shaws there. We've got Gr- the original Grim Angus. And, of course, Madrake, Ironhood, Thornwood, Chieftain. So Calandra definitely, with her tier, with the Elemental Communion, where you get to have all those lights, now you get to pick what lights you want to make that up with, so that's crazy good. Uh, I don't know what you'd really pair it with. Some people are saying Grim Angus, but I'm not really a troll player, so I can't really tell you. I haven't been up against uh, Borka before, and I, pl- I think I played against Calandra once, but I don't remember how that game went. Yeah. Starcrust sucks. Yes, it does. I remember that much. <laughs> and moving on, we've got Morvana the Autumn Blade, my first the, my first uh, hordes purchase there. We've got Kaya the Wildborn. Yeah, I bought the Battle Box after I bought Morvana. we got Kruger the Stormwrath. Mm-hmm. And Balder the Stone Soul. To me, I, I like... Kruger and Balder is, I think, what I do here. Yeah, I Kruger and Balder is definitely a good, a good, definitely good there. Um, also, I would work in uh, Kaya the Wildborn. Uh, Kaya, Kaya is just a solid balance caster for circle, mm. and just her yo-yo, her yo-yo tactics work great because you know you can have something. Guard that guard that control zone, but actually leave it to to attack and then get pulled back to its guard post. So that's always good. And then we got Hedonism Bot. We've mm-hmm. got uh, Arch Domino Makeda. We got uh, Epic Xerxes, 
and um, the original. We've got Valdo. Valdo once again. Yeah. To me, I mean, it's going to be Chain Gang uh, Rasheth, and then probably also Epic Xerxes is what I would be looking at here. But I could see Makeda as well. Yeah. And, of course, Domino Rasheth and all the agonizers. Yeah. But uh, anyhow, continuing on. In fact, if I was a Rasheth, I would actually get – if I was a scoring player, I'd actually get on the part service or privateer and get some of the show the little agonizer guys that are carrying Rasheth around, mm-hmm. but then modify the, the, the so they're carrying platters of food. Ah, oh, okay, yeah, right? yeah. So they're like, you have the ones carrying Rasheth, but then you have some others like carrying platters of platters of food. Like one's got a holding a platter with a fried chicken bucket or something in there because <laughs> he can't get that big without eating some fried chicken. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and then and then one might have a cake or something because come on, you know he eats cake. Uh, anyhow, but moving on, we've got Cal- uh, the Legion of Everblades. We got Callus, uh, who I played against once. Mm-hmm. Epic Fagrosh, I lost count of how many times I played against him. Epic Lilith, same deal, lost count of how many times I played against her, just because uh, a good buddy of mine who used to live here in town and was a Legion player, he mm-hmm. played with her a lot. Play with her and Rias a lot. Rias is like his favorite caster. We got Absalonia, daughter of Everblight. So the two that I really like there is I played a lot of Callus back when I did Legion, and I just love doing that infantry swarm. And so again, have it on ADR where you can swap out the units as I want. You know, do I want to have a little bit more shooting? Do I want to have a little bit more of this? That's awesome. And then for Thagrosh, you could do your your shredder spam, and then you can always kind of like temper it so that on the sideboard, sure, you got 10 more shredders, but if you want to change that instead of being like a Carnivian and a Scythian or whatever, right? Like that's it's a pretty nice thing about an ADR. I know a lot of people are talking about Lil 3 and uh, Abby 2, but yeah, I mean, Legion is looking pretty good for this season of ADR. Definitely. And then continuing on last one the minion so we've got of course two we've got of course uh caliban the grave walker jaja jaja the death charmer we've got lord cover esquire and we got stern and drag yeah i don't know <laughs> it's it's not any like i don't play pigs but i play gators and i don't know i it's not any of the ones I really want to be playing for Gators, but Carver's great, so there's one. Yeah, and we minions didn't really catch on in my minion in my meta here. Uh, we had a guy that collected some Gators, but didn't go didn't um, follow through. I have a guy who does play Gators, but he plays his other factions more. Mm. Uh, we had a guy who commissions a buddy of mine to paint an entire you know an entire uh, pig army a th- an entire thornfall army for him but he never really brought it around to play yeah so not a lot of experience playing against uh, the pigs all right so that's all the questions then uh we did have one more from uh, Jin Genu1234, who asked, Is Gatsby 3 a good caster for starting out Cricks? Uh, sure, yeah, Gatsby 3 is great, has a lot of janky fun play, and yeah, go ahead and, and play that as a starting one. But otherwise, that's all the questions. So I guess we're down to recommendations. So, Tin Man, do you have a, a new recommendation for this week? A new recommendation? Well,. There, uh, I'm addicted to top 10 list uh, channels, so this course is another non-wargaming one for me. It's called Dark 5, and it's just really interesting stuff. It's uh, it's all video and text with some with creepy music playing in the background, and it cuts down a lot of different top t- five things, like top five different interesting sounds ever recorded. Uh, top, uh, There's one, one I watched that was really good. It was top five... Uh, People, uh, photos of people laughing in the face of death. So literally, people smiling or being defiant right before, right before dying. So uh, those, those were pretty. That was a pretty good one. There's just a lot, a lot of crazy, like top five dark secrets of McDonald's, top five dark secrets of Mc, uh, of Starbucks. Uh, a lot of really interesting stuff. 
I'm at. I think the one for me will be uh, L2 War Game. So these guys, it's a War Machine channel, uh, so it is not getting away from War Machine, but I, I have to bring focus to them because their channel has been pumping it out because they do battle reports. They also do a podcast on theirs too, but they're doing like four battle reports a week, and it's mm. – I, like, I can't even keep up. Like, I watch these videos at work, and I still can't keep up with all the battle reports coming out. So if, if you're looking for battle reports, that might be the place to go. Yeah, I'm subscribed to them. I've, I've watched a few of the battle reps. The battle reps are long, though. So it's like if you're in a situation where you got the time to watch long videos, mm. then, yeah, definitely. Uh, me, where I work, I got to be focused on my work. It's not a work kind of job working. Yeah, listen to podcast or watch a battle report while I'm doing my job. It'd be nice if I had a job like that, but I don't. <laughs> it's just why you got to move to Canada. <laughs> so otherwise, uh, that's all we got for this week. Any closing thoughts? Are we good there, Tin Man? Uh, we are indeed good. Uh, yes, I'll thank you for the, for this week. Uh, maybe. I'll get the motivation to actually narrate that battle report I've been sitting on for a year. Uh, mm -hmm. Last year at Kingdom Con, I played two games against uh, Men Off John. The first one was battle reported and posted. The second one, I don't know. Things kept coming up that killed my motivation to work on it. But, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, the only other closing thought I want to say is that if you're not a member of the Google Plus uh, War Machine YouTuber page, go and do that. Uh, there's still a, a competition going on for this month where all you have to do is join and post up a battle report. Or not battle report. This one is post up a list, and you're in there for getting a, a box of you know infantry that you want. So join in, join the fun, and that's really it. So otherwise, thanks for watching again. We'll catch you next week, and uh, see you later. Bye. is growing